Shut up and sit down. Welcome to the Bricks King Podcast, where I'm going to bend your ear about Lego. Review those amazing bricks of plastic and discuss what is new and up and coming around the Lego world. I'm your minifig host, Matt. Let's bet on it. Welcome in, everybody. Today, we are joined. Well, I am, I am beyond happy to be able to be joined by such a creative, talented graphic designer. You thought I was going to say designer, right? No, today you guys are going to get to hear from the truly, one of the truly amazing people that made all the little details pop in the new Seinfeld set that is going to be available on August 1st. So I want to introduce you guys to Crystal from the graphic design team of the new, soon to be coming Seinfeld set. Crystal, I'm curious to know your background. Obviously, you're a graphic designer. So how is it that you came to work for the Lego group? Uh, so I've been working in Lego for five years. Uh, before that, I was a freelancer for uh, three years. And I did a lot of like branding and uh, uh, T-shirt designs for like one-a-day T-shirt sites. I'm not sure if you guys know about that. But then before that, I was working... Um, also in like sports uh, t-shirt stuff and then before that architecture. So I'm like really, really kind of like versatile when it comes to different types of graphics. And, but I would like to say that my real background is illustration. So I just had like a robust um, uh, portfolio of like different types of graphic design, illustration. And then I uh, saw that there was an application and I just went for it. And I got the job. <laughs> so this set, the Seinfeld set, as I was going through the instructions at the beginning, like any idea set, you know, it talks about the the, the fan designer and it gave, you know, a little snippet of you guys. And it had mentioned that all three of you were Seinfeld fans, right? Oh, yeah. 100%. So, okay. So there are a ton of references throughout the, the set with different stickers and things like that. Obviously the graphic design level, not so much the build side. So I'm curious to know what of your favorite, cause we've got stuff in there like the yada yada episode. We've got stuff like uncle Leo, there's stuff of George where he's doing the mail fraud and he's laying on the couch, you know, the whole sticker. There's so many different references in there. What is the favorite one that you had um, in, in helping in design for the set? Uh, well, there, so me, Cesar, and Madison, we were, we're like huge fans of Seinfeld. Like we are hardcore. We were uh, building and, and doodling Seinfeld before uh, it went on um, ideas, on the ideas website. So like, obviously we, before, when we got the, 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 when we heard that it was being made, we just jumped on it and we made like a huge list of references of Easter eggs <laughs> that we could do like huge. It was an email. It was a live email that was going back and forth and stuff. But I have to say that uh, you mentioned it. My favorite addition to this digger sheet, sheet was um, Uncle Leo <laughs> because I love, I love Uncle Leo. And for me, like, I mean, there's a lot of obscurities when it comes to Seinfeld, right? A lot of right. like, you know, knickknacks everywhere, but just putting Uncle Leo there just made me feel like so happy. And if you look really closely, really closely, you can also see Larry David. Okay. So, okay. So, so <laughs> those are just like super kind of out there. It has nothing to do with the the um the apartment, but right. as a team, we really wanted to put some stuff like that because there was a lot of things that that uh, like what you said, how you say it, like drop to the cutting floor, I suppose. So yeah, Uncle Leo for sure is my is my favorite at least. <laughs> so I have one one other question I have is on the fridge it has the you know it has Schmoopy on there and it has five 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 and then there's a number after that. I don't recall if that number has any relevance. Is there any relevance to it or was it just a random 
Actually, see, that's a question for Madison because he made that sticker. So if okay. there was any reference, I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> because when we did, uh, so me and Madison, we were, we sat next to each other for like a year and a half in the same project. And um, in that project, we were just like, just, I suppose, fantasizing of like different kinds of like uh, minifigures that we could put in our own Lego Seinfeld set and stuff like that. So it, the passion was there. So we just divvied it up, the, the design, as like, oh, what do you want to put in there? Go for it. Do it. Oh, what do, Crystal, what do you want to put? Ah, all right. I'll put this in there. So, so Madison, he, he, he did the schmoopy one. And I don't know what the numbers are. <laughs> it could be his birthday. It could be something. It could be, it could be Jerry Seinfeld's birthday. <gasps> That I'm you know sure. what now I'm gonna have to look into it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna have to find out on my own before the actual show itself. So, one of the other things there's in in Jerry's little computer niche area where he's he's got his computer and they have he's got the Commando Eight air conditioner in the window. There's yeah. there's a um, there's a there's a person there on the sticker with his hands clasped together in a portrait. Who is that supposed to be? Oh, that's supposed to be Kramer. That's the Kramer. Okay, that's what I thought. I just was like, okay, I, I want to make sure before <laughs> before I say anything. And then across from that, is that supposed to be Keith Hernandez? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> okay. actually, that's a that's actually a poster that is in the reference. So I can't one hundred percent say that is Keith and Hernandez. Oh okay, Hernandez, <laughs> but it is a part of the uh, the apartment setup. So, because we we got we went deep, we went and we we did some research and development, and we like found all the nooks and crannies of that apartment. So we thought to to bring in some authenticity, just to just to do that little sticker there. Well, you guys did a, an amazing job because even even like the little buzzer intercom that's on the door or on next to the door, I looked at it real close, and then I'm pulling up an episode of Seinfeld, and I'm like. Holy cow. <laughs> it's like spot on. Not not to mention all the other little design details, but um so to the minifigs I want to talk about and then we can go through the rest of them. Kramer's shirt. What what made you guys decide to to choose the the lobster design for Kramer's shirt? Well, actually, we did a bunch of little different designs for Kramer's shirt, but um at least I guess for the both of us, when we remember Kramer, just, you know, if you say Kramer, we just think about the brown uh, jacket mm -hmm. or the lobster shirt. So, and then I, I believe in like one of the seasons, I'm, I'm going to, I'm not sure, fact check me on this, but maybe season three or something, the the box has a, a Kramer in the lobster shirt. Oh, so okay. <laughs> we just thought, we just thought that was a good representation for Kramer. And also it just kind of like represents his goofiness in a way. Yeah. So we thought that was the most fun. Yeah, I would, I would agree. The, I, I was curious because the shirt was a good choice. <laughs> There's so many different designs that he's had throughout the, obviously the, the, what is it? Nine seasons. There's plenty of, of things to choose from, but I thought that was a good choice. Uh, George is the other one. George is, <laughs> His uh, his shirt, his print was interesting. Where? Tell me a little bit about how you went about choosing how to, because he's got a red jacket on, and then he's got his like, is it? I guess it's supposed to be like flannel underneath. Yeah. Okay. So uh, again, I'm terrible at, at remembering episodes because <laughs> there's so many things happening in one episode that I can't pinpoint it. But there's just an episode where he's a. Uh, I like to no, no, not that episode either. There, he has this red jacket that he uses throughout several episodes, especially the the episode I think that Jerry is is um doing a race mm -hmm. with. I think I think with David Putty. I, I'm not 100, percent but he's wearing that red jacket, so I thought that would be like cool to to incorporate that in his design, so he can pop out from the the apartment. And then uh, the plaid, that was just like, you know how George usually just wears a plaid shirt all the time. That was kind of like a weird combo that I have never seen do in, in, in Lego. Mm -hmm. We've done like red plaid or blue plaid, but this weird green 
red, yeah. blue kind of combination plaid. So I thought that was uh, interesting to do. So it was mostly just so he can pop out because Loki's he's my favorite character. So I designed it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it turned out really well. The the glasses on the face. George's face, of all of them, I think is probably the most difficult. In my opinion, it was probably the most difficult just because Jerry's kind of the same throughout. Elaine, you know, is kind of the same throughout. Kramer, you know, is... George is very highs and lows, and there's a lot of expression in his face throughout the seasons, so obviously he's got his glasses on and kind of a furrowed brow going on. How did you come about choosing how to design his his face for his fig? So for for George, it was kind of like it had to be pretty iconic because his wig doesn't allow him to have two uh, double sided head like mm -hmm. the other characters. So it was like really kind of like what will represent George? And then I was thinking, you know what, George is always complaining. He's always having a bad day. Something's always happening to him. So why not just put a disgruntled George-like face, like just kind of like annoyed. So for me, at least, that was what represented the character of George in general. So um, it, that's what we went with. It comes across did, very well. <laughs> yeah, uh, we also did like a, like, because it's either extreme. It's either either grumpy or like super happy, right? Like he's busting Jerry. And so, like, I also made an option with, like, you know, a uh, super happy face and stuff. But it just looked weird. It just looked, <laughs> for me, it just looked weird. It's like, that doesn't, no, that's not George. No. So, George is always disgruntled. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's, like I said, there's so many different references. I mean, you guys have the... Um, the Fusilli Jerry, you've, you've got so many little things that if you've, if you're a fan of the show, there's, there's just so many different things in there. And one of the most iconic, I guess you could consider bad dudes was, you know, um, Newman, Newman, Newman. So Newman is in his, in his blue, uh, torso is, is that's his, obviously his male uniform, so he's he's a dual facer as well. So what, how did you choose those? Because those well, came across really well. Well, actually, uh, that's uh, Newman is uh, Madison's uh, favorite character. So he really put a lot of effort into that one. And I can say that, like, what I believe that he he did was um, he. So Newman is the more mischievous one mm -hmm. of the bunch, right? So, like, you can never trust him. Even when he has, like, a smile on his face, he, he has, like, a little <laughs> tinge of, of mischievousness in there. So, like, if you see his happy his happy face with the, with the smile, like, you can see, like, his eyebrows are still kind of like, you know, I'm up to no good. And then the other side is just straight-up evil face, right? Right. So, like, I just think that Madison did a really good job at, at, of um conveying his personality through that it's it's really kind of like funny when i first started lego i was kind of nervous i'm like how am i going to make these uh characters look like they like them through lego right because i was just a noob i didn't know anything but then as you as you work uh longer you kind of just look like a caricature like one of those caricature people in the beaches right mm -hmm. like they just see the little features and then we add that into that and somehow it, it works so i think i think maddie did a good job on him he really loved it <laughs> that one and george they're they're, they're all hard it's hard to put number one and two it's like one a and one b <laughs> and the others are great it's just there's something about you know, their, their specific character with the show and then seeing him in Lego form and stuff like that. So my question to you is, uh, I think it was a few days ago. Obviously this is not going to be out until some time from now, but, uh, Jason Alexander put out on social media. He's like, well, I guess I'm now a Lego or something like that. And it was a picture of his George minifig. You designed the George minifig being yeah. a being a super fan, I don't know if you saw it. How how does that feel to you? I mean, like you're you are ingrained into the Seinfeld lore for the rest of history. 
I'm telling you, it's a big deal. At least I'm, for us three, we're just huge fans. And for, for us, when, whenever we get like a chance to do something like that, be, like you said, be part of history, even if it's for a little bit, like it's just huge for us because we have so much love for the for this IP, for, for this show, that to have an actor recognize your work is kind of like, whoa, that's crazy. <laughs> so like, no, yeah, I was I was super excited when I saw that. So I just hope we could do more Jason Alexander. I, I got to figure out where else he's in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't know. There's not a whole lot after Seinfeld. I mean, that was the, the one shot fits everything. Um, so out of everything that maybe you designed or you and Madison designed or just kind of in general between the two of you, what did you guys find was really difficult to accomplish going through the, the graphic design process? Uh, to accomplish, difficult to accomplish. To be fair, I know this sounds like cliche maybe, but it was limiting all the, the Easter eggs that we wanted to put because, I mean, we have, when we're creating a, a, a set, we have a, like, you know, um, limitations, you know, like, you know, like, um, just different design restrict restrictions, I guess. Um, and in this case, we couldn't go full on crazy with the sticker sheet. So we had to find like a, like a mid-sized one. But there's like a lot of Easter eggs that we could put in and stuff. So it was really hard to choose which ones are the ones because this, this might be our one and only chance of doing Seinfeld. You know what I mean? Like we do have like the hopes, like we saw friends uh, come <laughs> out in ideas, which I was also part of. And then we saw the big apartment. So who knows? Who knows? Maybe in the future we we get uh, the restaurant or something that we can add all the Easter eggs that we wanted to put in the apartment. But that literally was one of the hardest things to 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 pick out of our long list. What could we put in there that actually we think is fun that the fans would like that Brent uh, Waller, the mm -hmm. desi fan designer, would like, and that would also represent the set. So that's definitely the hardest part. Yeah, I, I was thinking about that as you were as you were saying that, and I was thinking, well, I guess you don't want it plastered with all these stickered references from yeah. the many seasons because you still want to maintain the, you know, the accuracy of the the apartment and stuff like that, that or the set apartment. So you mentioned Brent, really interesting creation. Obviously, this isn't his first go around with ideas, but this this was just to me, it was just a step above. So how do you, how did you manage to take what he had created, you and, and your, your colleague, as far as graphic design goes, and still be able to keep it within maybe the vision of what he saw for it? Because obviously he's not a graphic designer and he's not, you know, got the resources that you might have and in, in, as far as creating and things like that. So how, how did you manage to make his vision come to life i guess well he he really kind of like gave us a good starting point with his sub su submission on lego ideas like mm -hmm. he had a lot of references in there like i i used um his uh his um uh he he, t he did like a little kind of like a i don't know how you say it, like a picture or a display of george in his like in on the chaise lounge and stuff yes. so i kind of used that as reference and okay. stuff but but we definitely had like a collaboration. We called them a couple times, like you know, on um, a video chat, and we showed them the the set. Sets I was like talking about all the bricks and stuff, and and the buildings, and then uh, me and Madison would go in and ask his opinion for of the ideas that we had, and and he loved them. So we always try to uh, uh, include him into the decisions as well, because this we are creating, we are realizing his dreams right and and our dreams right he made, <laughs> he made he made our dreams come true as well yeah exactly So like uh, it's definitely a collaboration for sure we just don't take his idea and just go, run with it we we would like we always want to bring in the fan designer to to give his input so yeah he did a good job I, he did a great job and i'm glad it happened <laughs> And you had mentioned the friends stuff. And when the friends came through, I was like, Oh my God, I need, like, I'm not a big friends person. That would be my wife. But this, I'm like, Saiva, I can tell you this. I can tell you that. I know what's going on with this. So anyway, 
the last question that I have for you, and then I know you're going to be on your way because it's later hours heading in the late afternoon over there. You had mentioned that you worked on the friend's apartment. Is there anything that you would graphically designing sense? Is there something that you're like, you know what, one day I want to be able to be a part of this project or this team or this IP or this spe- theme in specific? Is there something that you're just holding on waiting for aside from Seinfeld? Because this dream is now realized. <laughs> You know, I've been really lucky because I, I, I have the type of personality that I just go for it. You know what I mean? So, like, if, if with, especially with ideas, I've worked on all my kind of, like, dream jobs. Like, I did Friends. I, I, I worked on the Muppet set. Not okay. the Muppet set. Sorry. The, the set, Sesame, Sesame Street. Yeah. So, I worked on that. And then Seinfeld. So, like, I'm, I feel like I'm pretty much set. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I've done it all. I've worked on Harry Potter and whatnot. But... I wouldn't, listen, I wouldn't say no <laughs> if they have something coming up in um, The Fresh Prince or Family Matters or Frasier. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> You're like speaking my language here. I'm just now going to be hoping I'm going to need somebody from the ideas theme, you know, somebody in the community to throw something out there. Oh, my goodness. I know. People in the community, please, we beg you. <laughs> Put up a, a, a Fresh Prince that I, I need it. I want it. <laughs> You're going to have at least a few backers coming from Lego fans in general. And definitely you um, as yourself, Crystal. Well, I appreciate you taking a, some time out of your day and spending it with myself and the community. I am really excited for them to be able to get their hands on this. As I have, it was really awesome. The, the build was cool. And, you know, that's another discussion for another day. But the the references that come through with the stickers, with all that stuff, it just sold it. So you guys did an amazing job. And, yeah, I don't I don't have anything else to say. I'm just going to continue to gush with how awesome it is. So, But uh, Thank you. I appreciate it, Crystal. And um, I appreciate you taking the time and interviewing me and um, and, and liking the, the graphic work of uh, the set and it was great. Thank you. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. It, it is always a blast to talk to somebody that knows their stuff about a product, about a theme. And especially if you are a giant fan, in this case, Crystal is with Seinfeld. And it, it was just awesome. It's a, it's a shame Madison couldn't be there. We will have the designer on in the future. And who knows, maybe we can make some magic work with Brent Waller to try and get him on. Obviously, he is in a different part of the world, way far away. <laughs> when it's day here, it's night there. It is, it is just a very difficult timing schedule. But we are going to try and make something work and hopefully have him on in the future to discuss his process of going through it and then having the discussions with the team, just like Crystal had mentioned. All right, let's close this thing out. We'll be back with another episode before you know it. And as always, I'm your minifig host, Matt. Let's vote on it.